Lord standeth in the way of the sinners who sit in the seat of the scornful. And we would want to walk with Christ and stay closer to God. Especially during this time, let's stay closer to God, keep our minds in tune with the Lord. Amen. And so I'm just going to come before you not long, but I'm just going to ask if you know the song, join with me. It's an old hymn that I used to hear when I was little, and I love it. I love it. We're going to pick it up and jazz it up a little bit, just a little. Hey, just a close walk with me. Yes. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Good morning, GI. Welcome to another Sunday. We appreciate your presence with us. We want to say welcome to all our family and friends, all our visitors. We appreciate you tuning in with us this morning on this experience. We hope you guys uh, just sit back and enjoy, receive the word, and um, yeah, continue to just flow with us. So we thank you. We appreciate you. Can't wait to see you all again. We miss you. God bless you all. From the
Amen. It's good to be in worship on this Sunday morning. Come on, somebody give God a hand of praise for this Sunday morning. We are glad to be here and just glad to be a part of this worship experience. God is doing brand new things. Uh, how many can look back over their life and say God is doing brand new things? How many things have God done for you that you can give him praise for? How many things have God done for you that you can worship him for? How many things have God done for you that you can exalt him? How many <laughs> things have God done for you that you can bless his name? Isn't he a wonderful God? God bless you. We are ready to get uh, our word on the way. We got an awesome word to get today. And I just want to remind everyone we have, I believe, nine days before we vote. Get out and vote. Some of you, I'm quite sure, have cast your votes, okay? A change is getting ready to come in nine days, okay? So we please get out and vote, okay? If you haven't registered, register. If you have friends and loved ones and co-workers and, and children that haven't registered to vote, make sure they register to vote because, like I said, change is getting ready to come on the 3rd of November, okay? Y'all believe the bishop on the 3rd of November. And so I just want to uh, uh, remind you of our responsibility, okay, our civil responsibility. But I just thank you all for being a part of this worship service. Uh, we're not going to try to hold you long, but we're going to try to be strong, okay? We want to be strong, and I just thank God for each of you that have really tuned in to, to our worship experience, okay? Invite and share. Invite and share people to come and worship with us on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, okay? Our B Bishop in My Hall YouTube channel, okay? Bishop in My Hall YouTube channel. All they, they do is click in, okay? Let's get to the Word of God. I love y'all. Yeah, I love y'all too. I love you too, okay? I love you too. Thank God. <laughs> thank God for y'all. love you too. Father, we thank you for this Word. We thank you for this opportunity once again to bless your name. And we just thank you for just giving us life, giving us breath where we can just exalt you. Jesus, you are Lord of Lords. You are King of Kings. And we are so excited about what you're doing in our life. Let this word burn on the inside that we may get excited about the things, about the promises, about the blessings that's getting ready uh, to come into our life. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go back to the scripture. I really enjoyed this scripture, Philippians 3. Really enjoyed this uh, this scripture. We're going to hit on it. Okay, Philippians, uh, the third chapter in the 13th verse. Just some stuff that we need to clear up, okay? Some things we need to clear up, all right? Philippian, Philippian, okay? The third chapter in the 13th verse. I'll wait till you get there, wait till you get there. And so I just want to just celebrate each and every one of you. I want to tell you that I love you, that I love you so much, okay? I love you so much and thank you for your support. Uh, the Lord love you dearly, okay? The Lord love you dearly and we just uh, just thank thank you for your, your tenacity. That Just thank you for just being with us, okay? And holding in there, okay? And um, many have walked off, but you're still here. So we just thank God for you. Look at what the Word of God says in <clears throat> Philippians, uh, the third chapter and the 13th verse. Brother and I count myself to have apprehend. I count not myself to have apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, okay? And reaching forth into those things which are before. We're just going to deal with that, okay? Let me read it again. Let me read it again. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehend, okay? But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. Okay, that's what we that's what we're gonna do. Okay, just for a, a few minutes, we're gonna use uh, for an outline or topic or a subject, uh, pressing your way. Okay, pressing your way. All right, pressing your way. Okay, you got to press your way. Too many believers today, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, get wrapped up in things and lose the, the joy and the peace uh, they sought to have in Christ Jesus. See, when you get wrapped up in things, uh, your joy and your peace uh, evaporates into thin air. They mind earthly things and lack the spiritual mind of the dedicated believer. 
you're going to walk with God, if you if you want to uh, talk with God, you're going to flow with God. You have to be a dedicated believer. You have to trust Him or feel God at all times. Okay, you you have to depend on God at all times. Okay, you got to learn how to lean on God at all times. That's, these are some of the things that we must understand. Okay, when you read this chapter, note how many times the word things is used. Here, Paul described the spiritual mind, the mind that elevates God thoughts and is uh, directed toward God's goals. Remember, it takes courage to press your way. I, I'm feeling God. You ready to get on? <laughs> hey, 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 let me say it again. It, it takes courage, the courage of God, the courage that God built on the inside of us, the courage that God just uh, layer our spirit with. It takes courage uh, to press your way. Are you with me here? It, it takes the commitment uh, to the Lord to really press your way. The great apostle Paul is saying, <laughs> Brethren, I count not myself to happy in, uh, but this one thing I do, forgetting, okay, those things which are behind. Remember, it, it takes the happiness of God in your life to press your way because happiness has a way of making you forget things in the past. Are you with me? It, it, it takes it takes. Uh, contentment when God when God rests in your spirit he gives you a spirit of contentment I, I am contented uh, in whatever I do okay and so it takes the, the spirit of contentment to press your way. Somebody hit the bishop and say, Bishop, I'm trying my best to press my way. Come on. I'm going to wait for you. Hit me and say, I'm trying my best to press my way. I'm trying my best to press my way. It, it takes, it takes them. my brothers and sisters uh, assurance, knowing that God is with you, knowing that God is watching over you, knowing that God is protecting you. Uh, it takes assurance, um, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. It, it takes the assurance of God to press your way. Are you with me here? Here, my brothers and sisters, um, uh, in this chapter, the great apostle Paul described three major events. But before we get to these, those three major events, I, I like the way uh, David, David talked uh, in, 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 in Psalm 62. If you want to turn there with me in Psalm 62, because all time David had to press his way because it was a time in his life where he could not depend on no one. And so in Psalm 62, and uh, the fifth verse, I'm going to say it again, Psalm 62. Get your Bibles. You know I'm a Bible man. Psalm 62 and the fifth verse. Look what it says. It, my soul waited thou only upon God, for my expectation is in him. Oh, good God of mine. David is saying, my soul, my existence waited on God because my expectation is not in things. My expectation is not in money. My expectation is not in the resources that I have. My expectation is not in my home. My expectation is not in my spouse. My expectation is not in my children. My expectation is not in my job. My expectation is not in my education. Come on, I feel gone. My expectation is not in my investments. My expectation is not in my wealth. My expectation, oh, you don't hear me, is not in my new car. My expectation 
expectation is not in my relationship, but he said in Psalm 62 and 5, my soul waited only upon God because my expectation is in him. And when your expectation, you better catch it, when your expectation is only in God, then when you are in a dark place, you can press your way. Do I have a witness? If your expectation is in God and things are not going your way, you can press your way. When your expectation is in God and you are facing grief in your life, you can press your way. When your expectation is in God and everyone else fail you, you have the power, the option on the inside to press your way. When your expectation is in God, hello somebody, and your haters rise up against you, you can press your way. When your expectation is in God and you have lost everything, oh, good God Almighty, when you have lost everything, you can still on the inside press your way. Do I have a witness? Because your expectation is in God. Hit your bishop again and say, my expectation is in God. Come on. I'm going to wait on you. Come on and hit me and say, my expectation is in God. And so that's where David, that's where David was in Psalm 62. Let me read a little bit more, a little bit more of Psalm 62. Look at that sixth verse. He said, uh, he only is my rock mm -hmm. and my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. Look what he said. He is my defense. I should not be moved. He's my rock. He's my salvation. He's my defense. And I shall not be moved. He's my rock. He, um, mm, mm, mm. He's my salvation. Uh, he's my defense. And I shall not be moved. Somebody hit me and say, God, come on, come on. Somebody hit me and say, God is my rock. God is my salvation. God is my defense. Come on, hit the bishop and say, God is my rock. God is my salvation. And God is my defense. Good God. Am I, and I shall not be moved. Look what he says in that seventh verse. He said, and, and God is my salvation and my glory and the rock of my strength. My refuge is in God. Let me read it again because I'm getting excited about that. He said, and God is my salvation and my glory. Look what he says. And the rock of my strength and, the, and my refuge is in God. That's where David stands. That's where David stands. We're going back to the text in Philippians, but I just want to show you how you can really trust in God. Look what he said. He said in the verse, trust in him at all times. Listen to me. It doesn't matter what you're facing in your life. You have to learn how to trust in God at all times. Let me get up in your grill. It doesn't matter what kind of hardship that you are facing. It doesn't matter what kind of hard times you are facing. It doesn't matter what kind of sickness you are facing. It doesn't matter, my brothers and sisters, if you are facing distress, if you are facing depression, if you are facing asthma and, 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 and high blood pressure and diabetes. It doesn't matter what you are facing. It doesn't matter if you are facing poverty. You can't, you, you, you can't even get your bills paid because you don't have nothing. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. You got to remember that God is your salvation, your glory, your strength. Hello, somebody. And you don't have to worry about being moved because you got God on your side. And I like that about David. Trust in him at all times because I trust in God. I don't care what goes on in, in, in my life. I'm a trusting God. And, and that's where God wants us. He wants us on the platform of whatever happened in our life. We don't have to fret. We don't have to worry about nothing. All right. Be not dismayed. Whatever betides you. God will take care of you. Do, do I have a witness here? God will take care of you. Look what he says. Trust in him at all times. Ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Trust in him at all times, you people. And what he's talking about, he said, you know what? I come a time where you're going to have to trust in God. In the text of Philippians 3, the great apostle Paul, 
I feel God. The great apostle Paul, my brother and sister, is describing events that was going on in that city among the believers. He was talking about some things that was uh, that they was facing because that's the reason why he said, uh, you know what? Forget about it. Forget about it. That's what he said. Forget about the things which are behind. Let me say it again. Apostle Paul said, forget about the things which are behind. That's what we have to do. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehend, but this one thing I do, okay? Forget about those things which are behind. Those things which are behind. Let's look into the text. What, 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 what should we uh, start doing once we come uh, into a relationship with God? Once we begin to grow. Okay, once we begin to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, what is it that we should do? The first thing Paul is talking about, he said, forget the memories of the past. When you begin to grow, okay, when you begin to desire the sincere milk of the word, okay, whereby ye may grow. Apostle Paul is saying, forget the memories of of the past. Look what he said, that 13th verse said, forget those things which are behind. Okay? Press your way. Press your way. Press your way. Forget those things which are behind. Some believers, listen to me, some believers, I'm looking in the text, some believers insist on clinging to their past. I don't know why. Uh, if we are going to move forward, we must move, my brothers and sisters, in the things of God. We must move with the Spirit of God. If we are going to move forward, we must forget about the pain of the past. Mm. I'm going to continue to hold on to the past. I'm going to continue to hold on to the pain of the past. But if we're going to move forward, we have to forget about the pain of the of the past, okay? We, we have to forget about the baggage of the past. You, if you're going to move forward, listen here, you have to forget about the baggage of the past. The great apostle Paul is saying, you have to forget about the hurt of the past. The pain, the baggage, and the hurt of the past. You have to forget about those things. Hello, somebody. If we're going to move forward, I feel God, I'm getting ready to get out of here in a minute, I'm telling you, we're going to have to forget about the relationships of the past. Those hurtful relationships, if we're going to move forward, okay? If we're going to move forward, we have to forget about the abuse of the past. If we're going to move forward, if we're going to move forward, we have to forget about the fights <laughs> of the past. If we're, going to, if we're going to move forward, we have to forget about those things. If we're going to move forward, my brothers and sisters, we have to forget about the sins Um the past. You have, to, you have to forget about that because, because the great apostle Paul said, this one thing I do, forget about those things what are, which are behind. This one thing I do is forgetting about those things which are behind. Why do I want to carry those things? If we're going to move forward, we have to forget about the nakedness of the past. We have to forget about that. Yes, the devil want to continue to keep us naked. Hello, somebody. He wants to continue to intimidate us concerning our past. But, but if we're going to move forward, we have to forget about uh, the, the arguments of the past. We have to forget about the fear of the past. Hello, somebody. I feel it, God, because, because, because God has been good to me. If we're going to move forward, we have to forget about the wounds of the past. Because some of us, our past have wounded us. Do I have a window? And so if our past have wounded us, and, and Paul is saying we have to forget about the wounds of the past. Your past will destroy your divine purpose in your life if you keep embracing the past. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. Your past will destroy your, your divine purpose in life if you keep embracing the past. We cannot keep embracing the past. Note something in the text. Note something. I just want to note something in the, in the text. Okay? Note. A. Allow God to direct your future. Allow God to direct your future. Okay? What you talking about, Bishop? I said, forget about the memories of the past. Okay? 
the memories, the things that keep you stunned, the things that keep you motionless. You have to forget about those things. What things, Bishop? Do I have to go over those things again? Didn't I say pain? Didn't I say baggage? Didn't I say hurt? Did not I say uh, relationship? Did not I say abuse? Did not I say those things? Did, did, did not I say uh, uh, fights and sins and nakedness and arguments and fear and wounds? We got to forget about those things. Okay? Why? Because we must allow God to direct our future. And God to direct my future. Now, look, somebody, hit the bishop and say, God, please direct my future. <laughs> Come on, hit me. And say, God, direct my future. God desired to direct your future. Amen. If you allow him to, God is not going to come in and do nothing you don't allow him to do. But when you surrender to God, when you yield to God, God will come in and he will uh, uh, heal all of those wounds of the past. Are you with me here? That's what kind of God we serve. I like the way uh, Solomon said it in in Proverbs, uh, the third chapter in the sixth verse, I love the way he said this. He said, he said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. In, in all thy ways, come on, Solomon, acknowledge him. Who is him? First person mentioned, God. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And look what he said. And he shall direct thy path. He shall direct your path. Now, now, let me talk to you for a minute. God is not going to direct your path if you don't acknowledge him. God is not going to uh, understand your pain if you don't acknowledge him. He understands your pain, but he, he, he's not going to pay attention to it. Okay? God, God is not going to help you with that heavy baggage if you don't acknowledge him. God, God, God is not going to help you with the hurt on the inside if you don't acknowledge him. Okay, God wants you to acknowledge him, then he will direct, okay? God is not going to really help you with your abuse that you are dealing with if you don't acknowledge him. God is not going to, 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 to help you with the fight that's on your hand if you don't acknowledge him. God is not going to help you with the sin battle, and all of us have sin battles. Hello, somebody. Uh, cut it out. You have a sin battle. Every one of God, there's none have sinned, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And God cannot help us with our sin battle if we don't acknowledge him. He cannot help us with our nakedness. And, and every one of us stand naked before God. Hello. Do I have witness here? And so your nakedness expose you uh, to the adversary. Hello, somebody. Where the adversary can come in and do what he want to do because you are naked. All right. That's the reason why. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam had sinned, when Adam had ate, eaten of the fruit, we ain't not talking about Eve because the commandment wasn't given to Eve. It was given to Adam. And when Adam ate of the fruit, the Bible said their eyes popped open. I'm paraphrasing. Their eyes became open and they realized that they were naked. <laughs> Do I have a witness? See, when God cover you, you don't realize you are naked. When God covers you, you don't understand the hurt of your life. When God cover you, you can't comprehend the baggage that's going on. When God covers you, you're not with me. You can't deal. You, you don't have to deal with the abuse. When God covers you, hello somebody, you don't have to deal with the fights. When God covers you, you don't have to deal with the arguments and fear when God covers you. Are you with me here? But when Adam ate, his eyes became open and he discovered that he was naked. And when he came to God, hello somebody, and God had conversed with them, God said, well, wait a minute, who told you you was naked? Do I have witness? And so what you saying, Bishop, when you, are, when you begin to acknowledge God, God will direct your path. Okay, God will begin to, little by little, cover your nakedness. 
That's the kind of God that we serve. He's a forgiving God. He's a kind God. Hello, somebody. Do I have a witness here? And so the first thing on Paul's agenda is forget the memories of the past. Okay, y'all got it? Forget the memories of um, the past and, and that's what you're going to have to do Forget the memories of the past And then secondly So I can get on out of here Secondly Paul want to describe The next point uh, Stabilize your present situation Once you forget the memories of the past Then secondly You can stabilize your present situation Stabilize your present situation Where you see that at Bishop? It's in the text Okay It's in that 13th verse It said Reach forth into those things Reach forth into those things. Reach forth into those things. Press your way. Hello, somebody. Press your way. Stabilize your present situation. That's what God is looking for us to do. He's looking for us to stabilize our present situation. What you're talking about, Bishop, it is natural to desire appreciation uh, in the goodwill of others. That's natural. But we should not seek exhortation and glory from them. Hello, somebody. And that's why our past was naked. Hello, somebody. Are you with me? That's why our past was naked. Our responsibility, uh, you need to catch this. Our responsibility is, is what? Reaching forward. Reaching forward. That's our responsibility. Reaching forward. You have to make up in your mind. Listen to me. You have to make up in your mind. I will walk into my blessings if I continue to reach forward. Look and, listen to me. I will walk into my blessings. Not stumble, not fall. I will walk into my blessings. Why? Because the Bible said, reach forward into those things. And so I have made up in my mind that I'm going, that I will walk into my blessings. I have made up in my mind that I'm going to walk into my anointing. Hello, somebody. So many of you out there who are anointed and you're not walking into your anointing. Okay. I made up in my mind. I will walk into my deliverance. Yes, I'm, I'm going to walk into my deliverance. And, and uh, Are you with me here? I made up in my mind that I'm, I'm going to walk into my possibilities. It's possible. All things are possible. Uh, there we go. To them uh, which believe all things are possible. And so I'm going to walk into my blessings, uh, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to walk into my anointing, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to walk into my uh, deliverance, and my brothers and sisters. I'm going to walk into my possibilities, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to walk into my opportunities because there are opportunities out there for you. Uh, you just have to acknowledge God, and he shall direct thy path. Let me say it again. Because I'm getting ready to get out of here. I'm going to walk into my opportunity because I made up in my mind that I'm going to acknowledge God and he's going to direct my path. You have to walk into your abundance. God set the plate of abundance right before you. And you have to have a spiritual mind. You have to have a spiritual eye to walk into your abundance. Do I have a witness here? God has set the table for you. Only thing you have to do is sit down and eat. Sit down and eat, man. Sit down and eat, girl. That's all you got to do, woman. Sit down and eat. Stop complaining. Stop murmuring. Just sit down at the table of God and eat. I made up in my mind that I'm going to walk into my inheritance. God left me a great inheritance and so I'm going to walk into my inheritance. I feel God. What you talking about, Bishop? I'm talking about pressing my way. Do I have a witness? And when I press my way. I know that God is with me. When I press my way, I know that God is standing with me. When I press my way, I know that God is walking with me. When I press my way, I know that God is protecting me. When I press my way, I know that God is covering me. When I press my way, I know that I'm sensitive to the voice of God. When I press my way, I know that God, my brothers and sisters, is holding me up. When I press my way, I know God is undergirding 
with me. And so I'm here this morning to tell you to press your way. Look at your neighbor. Oh, your neighbor's not there. Look at yourself and say, self. Come on, somebody hit me and say, self, press your way. Good God Almighty. What do you mean, self, press your way? Just like David. David said, I had to encourage myself. And sometimes you have to encourage yourself. I'm getting ready to get on my pony and get out of here. Why? Because I made up in my mind that I'm going to walk into my victory. Victory shall be mine if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle. Victory shall be mine. I'm going to walk into my victory. And once I walk into my victory, I'm going to walk into my purpose. Yes, I have a purpose for being down here. I'm getting ready to leave you. Because I hear Paul saying, talk to me, Paul. I'm going to talk to you, Bishop. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehend. But this one thing I do. What do you do, Paul? Forgetting about those things which are behind. And so since I'm forgetting about those things which are behind, come on, ride with me, y'all. I'm going to walk into my purpose. Because God has been good to me. Well, I'm getting ready to leave you here. Good God Almighty. I made up in my mind. I'm forgetting old things which are behind. Because, because I don't want pain to stop me. I'm going to forget about those things which are behind because I don't want all this baggage to hold me back I'm going to forget about all those things but which are behind because I want to erase all the hell raisers that are in my life I'm going to forget all those things that are behind because my brothers and sisters I'm going to deal with that abuse in my life I'm going to forget all those things which are behind because I want God to fight my battle. I'm going to forget about all those things which are behind. Because God can forgive me of all my sins. I'm going to forget about all those things which are behind. Because God is going to cover my nakedness. I, I got to leave you. Good God Almighty. Paul said forget about those things which are behind. I got to forget about those things which are behind because God is going to help me with every fear. Ain't God all right? Oh, good God Almighty. Love casts out fear. I'm going to forget about those things which are behind because God is going to help me with my wounded spirit. He's going to help me with my wounded soul. He's going to help me with my wounded heart. And so I'm going to forget about those things which are behind because I made up in my mind that I'm going to walk with God. Isn't anybody here who made up in their mind that they're going to walk with God? Ain't God good? When you begin to walk with God, things begin to turn around. When you begin, to, when you walk with God, you can see clearly now. When you walk with God, then you can pick yourself up. When you walk with God, you can encourage yourself. I made up in my mind I'm going to acknowledge God and allow him to direct my path because I want to forget about those things which are behind me. I'm going to press my way. Good God Almighty. Somebody hit the bishop and say, Bishop, I'm going to press my way. Good God Almighty. It doesn't matter what I'm facing. I'm going to press my way. Ain't God all right? Why are you going to press your way? Because there are blessings in my future. Why are you pressing your way? There are good God Almighty deliverance in my future. Why are you pressing your way? Because there are possibilities in my future. Why are you pressing your way? Because there are 
opportunities in my future. Why are you pressing your way? There's a greater inheritance in my future. Why are you pressing your way? There is victory in my future. Why are you pressing your way? There is purpose in my future. Why are you pressing your way? There is an assignment in my future. God has given me an assignment. God has given you an assignment. What are you doing with your assignment? You have to press your way because once you press your way, God will stand by your side. Once you press your way, God will lift you up. Once you press your way, God will turn your life around. Once you press your way, God will pick you up. Once you press your way, God will take care of you. Once you press your way, God will give you inner strength. Once you press your way, God will give you power. Once you press your way, the Lord, God will give you strength. Once you press your way, I'm excited because in my spirit, I'm going to press my way. Press my way. Won't God help you press your way? Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Won't the Lord help you press your way? Won't he do it? The God that I serve, he's a mighty God. The God that I serve, he's a big God. The God that I serve would help you press your way. <laughs> press your way. Pressing your way. God has given us the victory through Jesus Christ that we can press our way. That's the kind of God that we serve. We can continue to forget about all those things which are behind and start pressing our way to a brighter purpose. A brighter purpose. Great assignment that God has laid on your plate. Are you fulfilling that assignment? When you're able to connect with God, hello, when you're able to connect with God in prayer, then you can start pressing your way. God loves you. He died for you. He was buried. And he rose on the third day. So that we can continue to press our way. It's difficult to forget those things which are behind. But by the anointing of God in your life. Let me say it again. It's hard to forget those things in the past. But by the anointing of God, you can erase the things of the past. It'll always be a scab where you've been wounded, where you've been cut, where you've been stabbed, where you've been betrayed. Where you've been talked about, misused, abused. But the pain is gone. Yes, there'll be a mark, but the pain is gone. Thank God for taking away the pain of the past. It's time to pray. I want to pray with you that you can continue to press your way. Okay, you can continue. Listen to Bishop. You can continue to press your way. You can continue to press your way. And I want to pray for you. I just wish you had your anointing on. Man, I wish you had your anointing on sitting right there. I would tell you to take out your anointing on so we can 
anoint you and you be able to feel the strength. You that can run and get your anointing on. I'm going to talk until you run and get your anointing on. I see you running. I see you running. Go get your anointing on. Real fast. Real fast. So that we can, ooh, Jesus, ooh, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. So that we can press our way. God wants you to continue to press your way. Tell me, say, Bishop, I got my anointing on. Hit me and say, Bishop, I got my anointing on. Bishop, somebody ought to be running around the house like they're crazy. Where's my arm? Where's my arm? It should be on your dresser. <laughs> it should be in your bathroom. It should be on the, the headboard your, or, or in your purse. Get your anointing on so that we can pray that you can press your way. Why? Because David said, I anointed my head with oil. My God, run it over. Surely, goodness and mercy. Surely, goodness and mercy. Shall follow me all the day. Surely, goodness and mercy. You got your all, girl. You got your all, dude. Come on, so we can your head with all. Father, come on. Let's pray. Pray before we pray. Get, get everybody together. Everybody scramble. Get in close. Get in close. Get in close. Hey Amen. Get in close. Stop all the racket. Cut the music off. Stop. Cut TV off. Cut all that off. Get in close. Why? You just you and God. And watch things begin to happen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. There's no power in the oil, but it's power in you, Jesus. And so we thank you. We bless you right now uh, for your deliverance power. We, we thank you right now for your healing power. We thank you right now for your influence power. We thank you uh, right now for your peace power. We, we thank you right now for your courage power. We thank you right now for your love power. In the name of Jesus, anoint right now. Let them feel the presence, your presence right now, God. I, I know, I, I understand that there are so many variables. I understand there's so many things going on. I understand there's so much racket in the background. But now we're able to understand the racket. We, we understand the noise now. We, 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 we familiar with the noise. So the noise won't throw us off now. We, we're familiar with it. We, we're familiar with the, with the roar. The roar won't throw us off now. We, we're familiar with that. But God, we ask you in the name of Jesus, just allow your anointing, allow your spirit to abide in our home. Allow your spirit to abide in our hearts. Allow your spirit to abide in our spirit. Allow your spirit to abide in our mind. So we thank you. We love you. We exalt you. Thank you for the inner peace. Thank you, God, for just relaxing our circumstance. Thank you for the power of meditation where we could just meditate on your word because thou art God. And beside you, Jesus, there is no other God. And so we thank you. We bless you. All those that need to be healed, heal them in the name of Jesus. All those, God, that need to be helped, hold them in the name of Jesus. All of us that need to be forgiven, forgive us all of our sins in the name of Jesus. All of those that need to be clean, cleanse us in the name of Jesus. So we elevate you. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify who you are and we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a hand to pray. Come on, y'all. Come on, give him a hand to pray. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. We, we thank each and every one of you. Thank each and every one of you for this worship experience. Man, I feel better this morning. <laughs> I can press my way. I feel better this morning because I'm I'm going, I'm going to press my way. I'm going to press my way. And all of you that don't know Jesus and a part of your sins, you can accept him as your personal savior right now. 
Only thing you have to do is say, Lord, come into my life and save me, a sinner. And right then, God, the Lord Jesus Christ, will come into your life by faith and give you everlasting life. All of you that want to be a part of this, this ministry virtually, the only thing I do is right there, just where it says chat, just chat with us. This is my email, Bishop. And believe me, I have my staff to get with you, my executive team to get with you. God bless you and God keep you. We, we love each and every one of you and we want to continue to have worship service with you. Okay? We want to continue to worship with you. God bless you. It's offering time. There it is. It appeared right there. It's time for us to give our tithes and offering. I just want to celebrate each and every one of you that's been keeping this ministry afloat with your tithes and your offering with your blessings to your bishop. I want to thank each and every one of you for being diligent in your collection, the collection of the saints, okay, up on the first day of the week, all right? So let's give our, matter of fact, let's give our tithes and offering right now while it's on our mind. Don't wait till we go off uh, the air. Let's do it right now. Tap it in. You, there it is right up there on the screen. Just tap it in and let's get it out the way because we want God to continue to bless us with abundance. Hello, in this pandemic, okay? We want to continue to bless us with abundance in this pandemic. I thank each and every one of you for when we uh, go off the air, you all just be um, cash apping. Bishop, I thank each and every one of you for cash apping me, and it's been a blessing to me, all right? And if you haven't, cash app is uh, Dr. Michael uh, Hall Cash App. I said, just cash up your, your bishop. I thank each and every one of you for remembering me, all right? But most of all, let's get our tithes and offering in, okay? And then on Tuesday at 6.30, there it is, Tuesday at 6.30 is our prayer line. There, there's the number and the code to get in. Love to have you. <laughs> Come on, saints. Come on, saints. Come on, saints of God. On Tuesday at 6.30, love to have you on the prayer line, okay? Love to have you on the prayer line, okay? And at 7 o'clock on Tuesday, okay, Pacific time. We're talking about Pacific time, all right, because there are people all over the country uh, that uh, gets with us, okay, Pacific time, 7 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, our worshiping word with the bishop, okay, Facebook Live. You, I, I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to chat with you, Facebook Live. I want to see each and every one of you on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. This Tuesday at 7 o'clock, I want to, I want you to be with me, all right, so that we can have some fun in, in the Lord, okay? And so, uh, God bless you, Sister Franklin, and uh, wonderful, wonderful, amen, wonderful service. God bless you, and I'm going to continue to pray for your family, okay? Uh, Sister Jeannie, I'm going to continue to pray uh, for your recovery. I, I won't forget you. We won't forget you. Okay, Minister Brown, you're doing wonderful. You're doing wonderful. We're going to continue uh, to pray for you. Okay, uh, Brother President, we're going to continue to pray for you and your wife, Misi. I know you're going through, but I know you feel much better right now. <laughs> we're going to continue uh, to pray for you. And all of you that I, I just can't off the top of my head remember this, that was sick and shedding, and we want to continue to pray for you, your family, and your loved ones, all right? And so prayer is going to go up. You continue to pray for the bishop. Continue to pray for your boy. Okay? Continue to pray for your first lady and, and the family. Continue to pray for us. We need, <laughs> we need your prayers. Okay? We need your prayers. And we thank each and every one of you for all that you do. Okay? Brother President, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You can't find a better friend. Deacon Wallace can't find a better friend than you. Okay? Than you all. Okay? Deacon Bell, you're doing a marvelous job in this house, keeping it together. I thank God for you keeping it uh, together. So we just want to thank God for all the singers. Jade, you're doing good. Thank God for all the singers um, that's been singing on uh, our at our worship time. Thank God for you. Newton, thank God for uh, each and every one of you. Like I say, Ebony and, and Devion is holding up the, the Christian banner. You know, Debian, you're doing a great job. 
Dip, you're doing a great job, boy. I tell you, I got some for you. I got, I got to see you, man. I got some for you, boy. I got some for you. I got some for you. I got to go roll on over to the bishop house. I got a whole lot for you, man. So, Dip, I want to thank you for being a wonder. You're doing a great job. God bless y'all. I love you. I love you to death. Okay, love you to death. And I will continue uh, to pray uh, for your uh, for your situation. Okay. Uh, Donnie and Lamika, okay. Uh, God bless you, your union. God bless you. Had some fun out there. Had some fun on them last Saturday. God bless you. You back off your honeymoon, okay? Uh, God bless you, and I may God keep you, keep y'all, okay, on your honeymoon. And that was a wonderful, wonderful marriage. And so, marriage made in heaven. So I really enjoy. And thank you for considering your boy. Uh, to marry y'all, okay? Thank you for that. It just made me feel feel good, okay? God bless you. Well, I got to get out of here because your boy is hungry. I'm quite sure you all are hungry. And so I'll talk to you later. Love you. Peace. Love. Your life is Your life is Out of control. Out of control. You're confused. You're confused. But don't worry. Don't worry. Your soul can work.